Hi, this is Cassidy Guard with Maximo TV, and I am here with the co-directors of the brand new project, One Under the Sun, with Rihanna Hartley and Vincent Chiran. Hello. Hi, how's it going? Very Hi. good. Well, first of all, I mean, I, we're not like revealing anything, but um, congratulations. Oh, yeah, Thank yeah, that's you. right. We just got married. It's fresh. It's exciting. <laughs> I love that. I mean, I think... I maybe I'm just missing it, but I can't think of many other co-director married couples. I think that's very is very special. Tell me about how that happened to come to do this project. Well, I came up with this idea with uh, with one other son. I met somebody named David Klein, really amazing guy. He's an astrophysics professor over at UCLA, and uh, he told me about his discovery with the Higgs boson with uh, the American Division back in Geneva, Switzerland, and uh, I was inspired by the story. Uh, sadly, he passed away like one week after I had met him, and uh, but I connected with his daughter, I connected with uh, his family, and they become very close to part of the film. But the idea of what he kind of left within me, I was kind of like, Rihanna, there's this idea of how we can probably end war in a day. There's this story that I think could be really good. So I bounced some ideas with Rihanna, and she was like totally on board. And we decided let's just do this as directors, like as equals, because we've been doing this for so long. I think it's six been, years, right? It's been about five or six years that we've been working together on production with various films. And they've always had the intention of some kind of, you know, pro-social initiative or social impact, whether it's women in film and in the industry or women as they're portrayed in the comic culture world. And with this project, when he met David Klein, we both really felt like this is it. We have to go for it because ultimately kind of at the root of it was the science and the story of how we're all one. And that if people understood what they have discovered, um, again, the science and the story of it, that we would completely look at each, o each other differently. And we would reconsider why are we fighting? Why are we going to war? Why, why is there violence? Mm -hmm. And so we felt compelled to do it together because, I mean, that's the whole point, right. is to kind of move forward into this new paradigm where it is about collaboration and equality and less about, it's my show. This is, you know, I'm taking the lead, which right. is, that's, that's, you know, that's the old way of thinking. And so I guess the long story made short is from the ground up, we really wanted to embody that collaboration and that, that unity. Yeah, co-creating is really awesome. I like the fact that uh, us as a couple, we didn't really think of it like that, but we thought of ourselves as man and woman in this really dominating male industry in, in film. And so I really wanted to help support the idea that men and women can co-create together, and not just in directing, but just any system, any position in the film industry, even with actors. So I'm just glad that we can actually play that role, and uh, I think we did a pretty good job. I think we did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> what I really like about it is that you're sort of able to break down the boundaries of typical t casting. I mean, you see that a lot with um, big budget studio films where people are being cast for what they think audiences want to see. Mm -hmm. yeah. But casting somebody like Pooja is really taking a stance to saying, OK, no stereotypes. Absolutely, an Indian woman can be an astronaut, no questions asked. So was it a challenge to get the freedom to do that? Or was it something that you were able to just like fully execute the way you want it? Well, it was very difficult because our main initiative was to have diversity. Mm -hmm. And there, there, we, we were in that uh, era of, I think, end of 2015 when the whole hashtag Oscar so white right. was a thing. And so for us, we're like, you know, it was already before that we were deciding, like, we need diversity. We don't need, like, a campaign to initiate this. So me and Rihanna were, like, really strong advocates of that field. So we were like, okay, let's cast an African-American woman. Like, that's got to be the thing. And when we went through the whole process of day after day of casting, uh, it was really hard to come up with a single person that would really just capture it. But all of a sudden, Pooja came in. And we didn't expect her to just, like, take the show and just rock it. In fact, we weren't even looking towards the Bollywood market at all. We weren't looking towards the Bollywood industry. And then when she came in, we were just, just so surprised. And you know, me and Rihanna had this really cool thing where we embrace the unknown. We embrace whatever is coming towards us and we just kind of see it for what it is and just go with it rather than resist it or question it or just kind of wait. So with her coming in, we sense this relationship that 
it wasn't just an actress coming in. It was a person coming from a background. Her background as an actor coming from Bollywood to here was that she was a strong advocate for anti-military uh, actions and also helping veterans who you know suffer from war in India, uh, education for young children in the society of India. And I was just like, wow, this woman has so much material and she represents such a good cause. Mm -hmm. I would be proud to be her friend. I would be mm -hmm. proud to have her in the film. And the fact that she was actually really vibing off our energy as directors and with our producer, Sonny, who's an amazing guy, by the way, uh, it, it just felt right. And, you know, and funny thing is Sonny and Pooja have connected so well together. And yeah, I mean, like, I love it. I mean, I don't speak for you, but like, I, yeah, I love I think it. We had a, you know, as the creators, we had an amazing opportunity from the very beginning in being intentional with the story. Mm -hmm. So we knew that this was going to be a story about an international team of astronauts. Mm -hmm. And so that was already setting the stage for us to have that diversity on screen because we wanted representation from these various countries in the film. Mm -hmm. And we were able to pull that, you know, on stage in front of the camera. Um, and then you kind of, so there's that intention of how do we want to portray the world? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that not enough people perhaps take that opportunity to be intentional with the content that, that, that they're producing. And we did. And we mm -hmm. were very committed to it. And then there's the flip side of that, which is kind of what you were talking about, which is just embracing the unknown and what shows up for you. So while we envisioned an African-American lead, when Pooja Bacha walked in, the fact that she had this humanitarian background, the fact that she had this just this fire and she believed so much in the film's mission, you have to go with that. And I think that's also commendable because sometimes the right person will walk into a casting room mm -hmm. and then they'll look down at the breakdown and say, oh, but we're actually looking for this. Right. And that person gets passed on. And I think that's unfortunate because you don't know what you're passing on. That could have, mm -hmm. it could have been meant to be, mm -hmm. right? And um, so we took our chances and we also stayed true to our intention. And I think it that, that combination yeah. totally It worked. absolutely works. Yeah. And yeah, let's keep doing that, by the way. <laughs> Well, colorblind is the word that really comes to mind because you're casting from people that really capture the role. And I w yeah. hope that, you know, other projects really see that there are plenty of actors, you know, that aren't traditionally cookie cutter, what you see in a lot of projects that can play like these amazing complex roles. Yeah. I want to mention, I just have to say, like, it's I heard the, re the rehearsals were in this very room. Is that true? That is actually very true. Epic rehearsal. Yeah, it was it was really fun, like because it was the first time that we had the whole cast together in the same place. We met them individually through casting, we connected with them individually, but once they all came together, all added it up. It, like, it just made sense. We're like, wow, this is a reflection of our life. This mm -hmm. is a reflection of our beliefs. And these people, very powerful creatures, very powerful beings, they showed us a lot about ourselves, which was like, there's more to you than you think. Like, you're creating something beyond yourself. In fact, it could you could be ahead of your own time. And uh, every now and then I had to look at my executive producers like Anthony Fino, who was in the room, and be like, yo, like you help support this idea. Because yeah, me and Rihanna helped create the film, but the people that help financially support the film, like Anthony, Fino, Heather Klein, Daphne Boyle, Gail Essex, uh, Mike LeBlanc, Danny Saab, all these guys, they aren't like exactly in the film world. But the fact is they are good people who had good intentions and saw our film and the potential behind it, that they were like, we're gonna help support you. And I, I hope that people who develop films in this industry look into something like that when they're trying to raise money for film, is that you don't need to go to a studio and like wait and beg and right, just right. hope to God that they're gonna- Green light me. Yeah, <laughs> the green light like button, you know? Like it really is the power is within you. And you realize that when you initiate that, you awaken it. That's what's amazing. I think that's what we're also doing with uh, the whole female empowerment thing. You know, I, for personally, I, I believe that women don't need the empowerment. I feel like they're already strong as they are. They just need the the answers, the motivation, like knowing that there are other people supporting this. And once that's initiated, they, they can carry it on from there. You know, I mean, that's what Rihanna's been doing. I just support her and I just like, go kill it. You know, whatever I can give you, I can give you. I'll give you the ammo, you know what I mean? <laughs> And also, I mean, right in the very beginning, it's not really giving too much away, but it basically starts out something along the lines of, you know, after years of political unrest, it's 2020. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm watching this and I'm thinking of the violence that it's really, you know, 
mentioning and it doesn't feel like it's anything different than what's going on in our world right now the reality of the parallels mm -hmm. so speak yeah. a little bit about i mean literally right now just the violence that's happening all across sure. the world and what it means to have a film with really a social message sure. you know a lot of times when this kind of comes back to what you were talking about is when you're creating something and there's an intention or a message, you can really rally people who care about that, both for financial support, but also for platforms so that you can speak on it. And we knew as we were going through the development of the script that this was sort of like this living, breathing, you know, art reflecting life. And that in there was the possibility to really like have this social mm -hmm. commentary and remind people of who who we really are and what we're really capable of. Um, I mentioned to you earlier that while we were in production, we even changed the script um, to incorporate what was happening in Paris at the time. Yeah. So this was unfortunate. There was a bombing in Paris, but it was such a parallel to the story of our character that we were able to weave it in. And there's a lot of that in the film. There's a lot of nodding towards the conversation that's happening right now with, you know, this us versus them kind of mentality and then kind of bringing it back to the fact that we're all, you know, human brothers and sisters on mm -hmm. the same yeah. planet. Absolutely. And so it, it, you know, oh my gosh, there's the Spider-Man quote, with great power comes great responsibility. And when you're privileged enough to create a film, that does come with responsibility. Mm -hmm. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, f I totally feel that, you know, no nations, no boundaries. We're all just one human nation. That's what we have to remind ourselves of. And I think that hopefully the film executes that and people do recognize that, you know, we're all one on this small blue planet. And going along with that, I just have to say it because I thought it was really impressive. It's a review. It says, an edge of your seat mystery thriller. Yeah. One under the sun brings audiences on an emotional journey and challenges their notions of war. This was a quote from Stan Lee. And the fact that it's a social commentary film, but also very entertaining to people that would be fans of Stan Lee and the Marvel fan base, mm -hmm. I think that really just, you know, speaks volumes. So mm -hmm. kind of going along with, you know, really um, the energy and the momentum of this film, what do you guys hope? to see next i think lots of conversation yeah, yeah conversation social impact really we're trying to bring the power back into the people's hands mm -hmm. you know the people who feel like their voice is very silent and i feel you know malala said this and i really she's like one of my heroes she says when the world is silent even one voice can change the world even one voice can be powerful i'm just like <sighs> You know, and if we can provide that voice for anybody, any part of the world, that's the most important part. Because to remind people of that conscious awareness of that, you know, you're a human being, you have the choice to make a difference. Th you know, they'll do whatever they want to do, either if it's to make a film or to start a campaign or to do a job or whatever that could change the world. But that's that's kind of our thing is just remind the, the abilities that they have. I also think it's, you know, we're just so honored to get that review from Stan Lee because Hello. this is, I mean, he represents a universe of stories in which there are wars, wars of many different kinds between countries, between nations, with, you know, superheroes and beings from out of space. But that's an element of that universe that he's mm -hmm. created. Mm -hmm. And then for us, you know, what we really tried to do was kind of reframe everything, reframe everything. So there's not a typical bad guy in this story. Mm -hmm. There's no usual suspect. There's no, you know, um, this country versus that country and this type of, you know, personality butting heads with this kind of personality. And I really think that what he recognized is us trying to kind of push the idea of what the human narrative is. Mm -hmm. Because we've been working with the same kind of story and the same, same kind of structure mm -hmm. for forever. And right. it doesn't really match where we're at right now as human beings because we are breaking through and we are thinking of ourselves differently and viewing our relationship to each other differently. And our notion of what war is, is different now. Mm -hmm. And I think that the stories need to change. So mm -hmm. I'd like to think that he sensed a little bit of that mm -hmm. in the yeah. film. Um, it definitely is sort of edge of your seat. There's a lot of mystery in it. And, you know, yeah, I think it's time for people to reconsider what is war. It's not just, you know, legions of, of soldiers against each other or, you know, 
bombers against each other, but what is war? Is it how I think about myself, how I think about you? It could be um, racism. It could be it racism. It literally could be racism, totally racism you know? Right. Like, the fact that we set ourselves so far apart based on our color and our ethnicity or cultural religion, uh, that in itself is a war. Like, even mm -hmm. breakups, like, I don't love you, I don't like you, don't <laughs> call me, that's a war in itself. <laughs> so once we start to develop the hate, the hate seed, that's, that's what's the cause of the war. Um, and hopefully this film will help spark that plug and be like, yo, you know, acknowledge that seed, get it out of your mind, you know what I mean? You need to get the love seed in there and start just loving everybody. I love that. <laughs> well, it's spoken from two newlyweds that are also co-directors is really incredible. Thank you guys so much for your yeah. time. This Thank has been you. Cast to be Guard with uh, Maximo TV. Thank you guys so much for watching and go see their movie, One Under the Sun. It's incredible. Thank you. Thanks Thank so you. much. Yeah.